Hello, Bill Molyneux here, and I'm doing something crazy tonight. I'm wearing my, my French shirt, my red toque, and tonight we are not going to do miniature war games. I'm going to talk to you about French Indian War board games, specifically the new French Indian War Volume 1 and 2 by Superior Print on Demand and the Bill Molyneux Game Company. So, let's start with, uh, I'm going to go over the games. Well, here we go. And uh, before we start with the Bill Molyneux games, Blue Panther Printing, which... Uh, actually prints one of my very first games, Struggle for New France. And this is a Schultz game and uh, Struggle for New France. The title came from the Struggle for the Bliss Farm by my good friend Elwood Christ uh, Woody, who passed away in 2014. But he helped me with the name for this game. So this is still in production. It's out now. Again, it's uh, I think it was produced, I designed about 15 years ago. So, Blue Panther Printing sent me a couple games. So before we get to my games, all us little game companies have to work together. And you know how much I love going to Yorktown to see and go to Scoot's Barbecue at Gover at Gloucester. Well, they sent me a couple games, and this is from the historical game company, The Battle of Yorktown. And they also sent me because they, uh, Steve at Blue Panther and all, they know I've run some 54 millimeter games of cartoon. And we'll go ahead and I'm going to pause the camera. We're going to open one of these for a few minutes. All right, wow. And by the way, to get this French Indian War feeling, I threw out a couple of uh, deer hides. So the Battle of Yorktown game. Comes in a box, of course. You've seen that. And uh, here we go. So it has some unique items in it. Um, it's a low complexity game. And the, uh, the map isn't on paper. It's on a, a piece of canvas. And it's a very nice, nice map. And let's see if we can adjust our camera a little bit. There we go, and I'll bring it up a little bit, and of course you see Yorktown. Now across the river is Scoot's Barbecue Grill. Scoot's uh, Barbecue is a really cool place owned by Mr. Gary Ward and family, and uh, if you get to Gloucester Point across from Yorktown, stop there for barbecue. So the uh, this game is low complexity, wooden counters. Pretty thick, and then uh, it has a few cards that are used for activation, and then uh, I think this will appeal to a lot of people if you're looking for a quick light game. Um, we'll zoom in there, standard attack, defense, and movement ratios, left to right, um, sequence of play, draw a card for activation. And look at this. One, one, two, three. Not even three pages, really. So, I really appreciate Blue Panther sending me uh, the Yorktown game. Um, Blue Panther Printing um, sells it. And you can find them on uh, online. And then we have the the cartoon game and pretty much the same thing same set of counters of course uh, they're dervishes fuzzy wuzzies and uh, your Egyptian troops and I did do that big uh, cartoon game a couple years ago at Historicon in 54 millimeter now now that uh, 
if you look at this and you're familiar with the Remember Gordon game from Phoenix of 1982, they produced uh, Zulu Attack and several other games. Um, it came with a bonus game of Khartoum. It looks very much like this. This one's done a little bit better, of course. Uh, better graphics and art. And I can't wait to get playing this either. So, that's, uh, that's the Siege of Khartoum game and the Battle of Yorktown. Both games by the Historical Game Company. And I, I don't know the game designer, and, uh, but, you know, he's a small little game publisher like myself, and uh, we also have to help each other. The game industry, of course, is very small. Uh, you got Lock and Load, Worthington, GMT, but um, in the world of board games, everyone really knows everyone. And we've talked about my struggle for New France. It's a grand strategy game, very low complexity. And so, what I did want to start off with is my new French Indian War games are coming out. But they're not sort of new, but I'm going to take us on a trip to the past. And hopefully I'm not boring everyone, but a long time ago, Two Buck Games and Peter Schultz and I created several games and I created the French Indian War Battle Collection. And it was sold in a Ziploc bag and I would actually sell these at French Indian War reenactments. After I would get done fighting, I'd be at Cook Forest or whatever in Fort Halifax and I would sell the games. So the French Indian War collection did really well. Now shout out to Fort Ticonderoga, Rich Strum, and Stuart Lilly, and the entire staff there. I approached them at the French Indian War College if they would consider carrying this game. And no historic site really carries games. One of my visions is to sell games at gift shops at historic sites. Not everyone reads, and young people might pick up a game more than a book. So the French Indian War Battle Collection included the Battle of Fort Carrion. Now this map is very old. This is 15 years ago. I'm going to show you the graphics of the, other, the new upgraded one. But uh, So that's the history of the Battle Collection. So the next, next thing I know... So then David Heath of Lock and Load approached me and we worked out where we totally revamped that Ziploc game into the incredible game Bloody Mohawk. There's Tom Hinkleman, Phil Dorenzo, I think his last name's pronounced, and Snapping Turtle, otherwise known as Greg Rerick. And they're great reenactors. And this is at a Braddock's Defeat event of the front cover. Now on the back cover of the game box, which is sort of neat, we had me. So the, uh, the Bloody Mohawk game had uh, a very unique rule book. It, uh, I included pictures of reenactors per scenario. It contains 12 scenarios. And the uh, interesting thing is the how the the book came out. You know, it, it really very high quality maps. Um, lock and load really did awesome for me. The Bushy Run game. We have a picture of. The Highlanders, they're local from York, Pennsylvania. And uh, Malcolm, uh, he runs those guys. And so I showed you the picture of the Battle of Carry On of the original graphics. Now look at that. Pretty fancy, huh? So we upgraded to this, um, 
to a much better map and artwork. And then we have, it did so well, we went and made Savage Wilderness. Now Savage Wilderness unfortunately came out right when COVID was coming out. So you can just imagine, I don't think we sold very many copies of this. And, but it's the same basic rule book. Now a couple neat things about, about the, uh, about Savage Wilderness. I was looking through and, sir, this is a Highlander named Ed. And he, he was a great guy. He was great my son Ethan, but he passed away quite suddenly. So I dedicated this game to him in his memory. And I'm still friends with his wife on Facebook and she's doing fine in the family, but it's been a, a long road recovery of losing someone young. So there's a couple interesting points about Savage Wilderness that are just, I think, phenomenal. So, Dr. Walter Powell, very famous historian, and he helped me great a great deal uh, with the Fort Ligonier scenario. And it came down to every tree, bush, and building is really right, right on. So, the actual head guy, Dr. Walter Powell, helped with that scenario. So, one of the things that uh, in Bloody Mohawk, a couple people would say, you know, the games aren't very long. You know, you don't have a long campaign game. Well, I talked with the park ranger, Robert Ambrose. Great historian, phenomenal guy, runs Fort Frederick outside of Hagerstown, Maryland. It's a massive stone fortification, and I like to volunteer and help out there. So, I talked with him, and we came up with a scenario of Fort Frederick being attacked. The fort was never attacked in the French Indian War, but we came up with a hypothetical what if the French did come to attack Fort Frederick. And it's a three part scenario. So it's 30 turns, not just 10. So I'm quite, quite happy about that, that we, uh, you know, we made an extra special game. And both systems use the same basic combat system. Now, David Heath of Lock and Load is really not producing my games anymore. He had some issues with his printers and COVID and he's gone in some other directions. So he generously gave me all the files to these games. I cannot say enough about David Heath at Lock and Load Printing. Um, just a wonderful thing. So I have all the files. My new printer, Jeff Follent, Superior Print on Demand, has, we reworked these boxes. They are now going to be specially made boxes for Fort Frederick and Fort Ticonderoga. Both sites pick their own artwork for the boxes, so they're totally different. And they're a wider, thicker box. So, I'm very excited that in the next week or so, they're going to be starting to ship out to some of the forts in the new boxes. Now you're asking, hey, Bill, why don't you have a new box here? I got one test copy and I gave it to Rich Strom at Fort Ticonderoga and uh, I have some more coming next week and I'll do an unboxing video. So stay tuned. The, uh, the plan is to have the new games volume 1 and 2 of the French Indian War at many historic sites. I hope a lot of them will carry them again. COVID really disrupted things. So Right now, Fort Ligonier, Fort Frederick, Fort Ticonderoga, hopefully Fort William Henry, since we have the Fort William Henry scenario. 
Now, I'm going to pause the camera and bring over another game. Wilderness Empires. Don Triani did my artwork. And this is a Worthington publication game. Worthington Press, or Worthington Publishing. And Uncle Mike and Grant Wiley. Now, I know Grant Wiley. I've gotten to know him quite well. Um, I can't say more wonderful things about Grant and his wife, Chris. Uh, we actually did some stuff with them last summer on vacation. They welcomed us to their home. Um, got to see the Worthington Warehouse. Um, Wilderness Empires is really a, a neat little game. It's Grand Tactics. Um, unfortunately, it is out of print, but I think you can still buy it here and there on uh, used sites. Um, I do not believe Fort William Henry or Fort Ticonderoga have any more copies left. But I had to give a shout out for uh, Wilderness Empires. So for our um, World of French Indian War games, uh, being a little uh, excited tonight over my uh, new games coming out, um, I think it's going to be exciting to get uh, games back into historic sites and teaching young children and young adults and old adults and family night, game night, about the French Indian War through board games. Um, I think that's about it for now. I didn't really care about the length of time of the video. So uh, I have quite a few published games, but the... Uh, Overall, they're all wonderful in my opinion, but Struggle for New France, um, the title came from my friend Elwood Christ, famous historian in Gettysburg, uh, author of the book The Struggle for the Bliss Farm, and uh, I think the struggle for New France will always be uh, closest to my heart because my friend, uh, for a very long time, till he passed away, uh, help me with that. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed going down the land of French Indian War board games. I'm going to pick this mess up and I'm going to be setting up Antietam in 54 millimeter scale, the Burnside Bridge scenario. Thank you. Stay safe, be kind, and uh, look for my games at Superior Print On Demand. Thank you.